All right, so we're going to talk about the head and specifically <clears throat> the forehead, the temple area, a little bit of the back of the head. So let's uh, block out some of that. And let's talk about it. Let's see here. Okay. So we've got from a profile is where we'll start. We'll see how far we get. And if we can get that eyebrow line, now notice if we're in a profile, we can't see both eyebrows, but we can usually, and I'm going to go right here, usually we can see the bump, which is the beginning of the far eyebrow, which is in connection, in conjunction with that beginning of the eyebrow on this side. So when we look at that, we can see it's almost a vertical something like that. And that gives us the front plane. This gives us the side plane, or you can come up here. You can round that plane a little bit. You can square it, whatever. doesn't have to be super accurate, but either one of those, both of those gives you that side plane. So now we know the plane on the side and we know the plane on the front, even though it's just a fraction of it, that's all we need. Plane on the front, almost vertical, plane on the side. There it is. And then we'll see it bump around and so on. <clears throat> and we can pick out a simple hairline or a more nuanced hairline, pick up kind of the shaved side, the white walls kind of thing however we want to do that and pull it down. And once we have this plane, and notice I have, don't have to be super accurate. I did that, but I drew that. It's good enough, either one or both. Just roughly. As soon as I've got that, then I've got all of it because now the bottom front plane of the chin goes that way. And that, of course, oftentimes, and maybe not, of course, for some of you who are new to this, but that oftentimes will be right where we see the shadow patterns or a major tonal change. Like that. This underside then is the digastric plane. Back to the neck and such. Notice there again, we oftentimes get shadow patterns. Now these are my pieces that we're looking at today. I thought it might be fun to do that, especially since I, I designed the light, uh, both in when I shoot the model, <clears throat> uh, I don't literally shoot them, but I take pictures of them. And the um, when I design the, the, um, uh, the, the tonal landscape, as they say, where the shadows go. And you'll see then those shadows lay beautifully on major plane changes. <clears throat> All the bottom planes, including the nose. Notice the shadow of the nose here. Going similar direction. Doesn't have to be perfect. <clears throat> the upper lip front of the upper lip, similar direction, <clears throat> the lower lip, and of course the front of the chin, all going very much <clears throat> the little front section of where the hair meets the forehead, all going, doesn't have to be exactly right, but roughly in the same direction. And you can make it exactly right, and I oftentimes will, but it picks up there. So that eyebrow line to ear, wherever the ear happens to be, is critical. And then that's gonna, we're gonna hang all of our major structures off that. This actually has a, a, a um, 
very strong secondary light, so it's lighting some of the shadows, more complicated. But if we just simplify that out, we'll knock this down here. Gray this out here. Notice how the values hang on the boxes, on the different planes of the boxes. And so what happens there, let's go back to our other what happens there is the eyebrow structure, the whole eye socket structure in here creates that eye socket, creates the bottom plane of the forehead. It also, where it bumps and meets the cheek, where the hair of the eyebrow ends, more or less, here's the far eyebrow. then this is all temple area. So the eye socket is going to help you find the temple. And that's because you see the eye socket here. Let's get a better grip on it. There we go. You see the eye socket here going around, protecting that eyeball, and then it flows right, I'll just do it with my finger, flows right back along the temple and notice when we look at that temple, it's reversed in my camera, so it's confusing me a little bit. Temple, it creates a corner plane. It's the side plane going back this way, but it's also where the side meets the corner plane. You can see this nice hot light from my studio light catching it right here. That corner plane is sitting right on or right on. There's that temple line, this will be corner plane, and then it stacks up to the top plane there. So they're all gonna track there, very simply just front side, top, bottom, or corners in between. And it can be several corners in between. In this case, we're just getting this nice, back over here now, this nice swing back. with a little bit of the corner plane catching light underneath that hair, and the hair is a little bit of a mohawk going on there, so that hair is sitting up from the skull. So it sits there. So notice how beautifully that tracks. If we can understand our structure, then the values will, the shape of the value and the edges of the value will cling to that structure in really beautiful ways. So this is all top of the skull. This is all side of the skull. It's going to be a slow transition in some way around a transition to it. We don't need to worry about that. We can just think of it as a box, chiseled box for now. And then we can get more nuance. Notice here, mind on that. This pulls down here. We'll just round that off. Trim it down a little bit. It looks a little meaner, a little more angry, but this is all front plane. It can be slightly rounded or greatly rounded. It can be totally chiseled. Any of those things are great. Just ballpark. We just want to get it roughly right. Pulling back. And then everything else tracks around that. This pulls down, and then that cheek pushes forward again to protect the eye. 
catches light. Get your shadow. Notice that zigzag action that's happening there. Really important. Forehead pushes forward. Eye socket steps back. Forehead pushes forward. Eye socket pushes back. Cheekbone pushes forward. Nose pushes oftentimes even more forward. And so on. And then nose pushes back. Cheekbone drops down or cheekbone by way of the masseter muscle right in here, right in here. Pushes back, forward and back, forward and back. And we get this distinctive zigzag action. It can be really rounded off and softened uh, with someone has softer features, say a little child. It can be uh, hugely uh, dynamically push as I did here. It's trying to make this aggressive. So it's attacking. These shapes are jutting forward, attacking the uh, opponent kind of thing. But forward, back, forward, back. As soon as we get that eye socket based on the eyebrow, based on the eyebrow line, based on the eyebrow line to the ear, now we've got eyebrow, eyebrow line to the ear. Now we've got a box in perspective. We just need to get it into proportion, make it more characteristic. Got a lot of work to do, but this gets us started. This is the bottom plane of the whole forehead. Nose pushes out, barrel, chin, so on. Back and forth, back and forth. And it gives me the temple line this way. This way. Pulls that way. Zig, zag. See how beautiful, be beautifully dynamic that is? I love the zigzag because zigzag, like a lightning strike, is aggressive. It's, it's in some ways an attack. So angry life, energetic, kinetic life, quick moving, sharp, Reactive life is zigzags. And the more zigzags you have in it, the more violent it can be, which is not bad if you're doing boxes. So that's our major structure. So let's look at that. And I think we'll probably end up with just this today, but we'll see. I'm going to take a look real quick, see if there's any comments or questions before I go on. Uh, I know Mike's in here for a little while, my buddy, uh, but... Uh, he has, um, has to scoot out at some point. Oh, thanks, Yuri. That's sweet. I appreciate that. Um, doesn't look like there's uh, really any questions. Good. That's a good thing. Uh, so, yeah. So let's uh, go back here. So let's look at something else. Let's see it from a different angle now. Let's get rid of these and pull this up. Now, this is kind of an unfinished hidden head, and I grabbed it partly for that reason, partly because it's what I could grab <laughs> with the time I had between my, my uh, two uh, live streams here. But it, it'll work fine. Now notice, here's the 
you know, on a layer. Here's the face in here. And it could be here, it could be here, in here, all those things. I would say here. I don't know how long it is. Even if I screw it up badly, it'll get covered. But I like to make a guess at where it's at so I can visualize the whole thing because we're only seeing half of things. If we can imagine the half we can't see, there's a better chance we'll get that into our drawing. So I'll uh, make my best guess on that kind of stuff. And then if you'll remember from our other lessons on this, if you were with me, the closer the ear gets to the front of the face, the more that head's turning away. And the higher that ear gets to the top of the head, the more we're underneath it. So it's moving away and tilting back. Not as much as I am, but to give you the idea. And if we think of that box logic, if we're on a profile, we put that ear kind of in the middle. It's about as close here as it is to the back of the skull. It's very similar from top of the skull minus the hairstyle to the bottom of the jaw, pretty close to that. So it's right in the middle there. So as soon as we justify it off the middle, that's going to give us some real cool action. So I'll leave that ever so slightly ghosted. Now, if I take that same head and move it closer and higher, we'll overshoot it a little bit compared to our model here. Then what we'll notice is that same ear that was in the middle of the head, now it's crowding. It was a couple of ears away from the front of the face, a couple of ears away from the back. Uh, now I'll use that, and just as roughly, doesn't have to be exact at all. That's a great place to make a boxy back of the head. And that's what's going on here. And I use the negative space of the background with that dark shadow rather than actually describing the, the positive shape of the skull. But that's there. And this would be the back plane of it. And I have these kind of speed marks. And this is actually either just kind of kinetics like a comic book you could think of. Or it could be a corner plane. It's catching a little bit of light. Well, the um, back of the skull is catching little or no light like that. So we can create that box just like we can move it this way and start seeing the front of the face here. Three quarter front we can move it into a three-quarter back. See how that works? Ear does wonderful things. So having seen that, now we're just getting a little bit of our eye socket. Here's the eyebrow line down to the cheek. There's that eye socket right in here. There's that eye socket right in here. And we'll make it uh, dark blue inside. And then this bumps down the cheek. This would bump down to the cheek and so on. This is back here doing that and the temple. 
and the temple. So where that flare is, is the temple line. Since we're underneath it, that temple is way up towards the top of the head, but that's the temple line. I want to have some sense if the hair doesn't cover it, if it doesn't get lost in the shadows, I want to have some sense that the eye socket is giving us the front of the face as opposed to the side of the head. It's the corner between and the temple rolls. Do it this way, I guess. The, um, is that, yeah, that's the right one. The temple rolls across here. And if we go back this way, get underneath it a little bit, then it can feel like it's very closer at the top of our contour. That's that temple line, flows back. So if we come back to this one, we have that really, really uh, great bone structure, this, mo this model. These are both the actual boxers that I hired uh, either at the studio or at the gym to let me uh, take photos and sketch, sketch them while they're boxing. Uh, let's see, oh, gotta get a layer. So there it is. Eyebrow line here, rolling or chiseling around. And there's that beautiful temple line. And it's going to take us inside. I'll show you a reference in a second that shows you that. Inside or all the way to the top side and all the way to the back side. Either one or both. It can end inside short because it does. Or it can go swing all the way to the back and catch the back of the skull. And you can see how this just fades out here and gets lost, but you can feel how it continues to the back of the skull. You can also feel where it breaks here, where it continues to that inside, which is really the corner where the back corner moves into the back plane and the back corner moves into the side. Let's look at one more three quarter to see how that works. So here, this is the one I used to uh, call you guys out today for the live stream. And you can see here's that front plane. Here's that side plane. Here's the forehead moving forward, front plane, front plane, Bottom plane, cheekbones push out, catch light, forehead pushes out, catches light. Bottom plane where the eye sockets or most of the eye sockets are, where the eye set is a, cuts back in, doesn't catch light. We can do that very in a chiseled manner and it can be simply chiseled like that, simplest of boxes, just front and side, no corners. Or it can be a front plane and a little bit of two corner planes and then a side plane. So it can chisel like the facets of a diamond. Or it can round across. In here, all those things. Each time it'll be front plane, side plane, top plane, bottom plane. This side plane in this situation is going to catch more light. The front plane, especially the far front plane, is going to catch shadow. And notice what's happening now here. Let's get rid of that. We're getting that eye socket. And there's the zigzag. If we go on the temple, right here, it can go all the way to the back of the skull, or it can stay in lower and be just the side plane. This is side plane, this is corner plane, and then there's a back plane around we can't see. Side plane, this is corner of the brow, front across. 
side plane. This is corner plane. This is top plane. And notice how you can just make this smooth transition and let all that side plane catch light. as we did here. This whole side plane is catching shadow in this case. But it's all flat and a smooth transition from the front of the forehead to the side temple. And as they meet that connecting line, those two planes coming together, swing right up to the top or near the top of the head. Swing right up to the top or the near the top of the head. But we can also show the skull and we can let the skull build out when appropriate because it is rounded with muscle and bone. Just the bone gets a little hollow in here, muscle fills up. So sometimes this will swell and bump. And we can also see it swell and bump here. Notice that it's doing this. Bumping forward, bumping forward. This is the skull cap coming down in and the brow ridge coming out. And if we did a simplified version of that. So notice how we're getting the biggest possible structures. And even thinking of those biggest possible structures as two dimensional shapes. And then adding more and more construction to them, more and more connective tissues. And I will look to see how things box squarely and how they structure in a more rounded way. Round because they're ball-like, round because they're a slice of a, of a tube, maybe. And then as we uh, move along here, what we might see is that forehead coming down. This is a skull cap, what we're seeing right in here. It's usually it's very subtle, but it can be quite distinct. And then the brow can bump forward, and that's usually very subtle, but it can be quite distinct. So you can actually get, and you'll see it with cartoon villains a lot and comic books and stuff, but you'll get that bulging brow ridge. And the contour will actually bump as the skull becomes the forehead and the forehead bumps into the eye socket and the eye socket is then split by the wedge of the nose and we'll get this wonderful journey down from skull to brow to nose from skull to brow to nose it can do all sorts of things oftentimes it's just smooth you can see here just a smooth transition there but not here, bumping, bumping. You can see when the structures bump, box-like or egg-like or whatever, oftentimes the shadows, the tones will bump too. There's that wonderful zigzag again, going right back to the masseter, the, the chewing, how you chew, chew your food, like so. And then this can flow beautifully smooth front to, to side to front, and it can be curved versions of that, or it can be rather bulbous, either which way. We want to feel the transition from the skull to the face 
and we can make the transition from skull to face on the side of the face using the side of the skull, which is that temple area. Side of the face, trans uh, making a transition, side of the skull, making a transition into that front face structure and side of the skull making a transition into that back going around the other side, the back of the skull. So there's a lot to work on and a lot to work with and when in doubt simplify. But if in some way or another you can show the back of the skull against the side of the skull, show the side of the skull against the front of the face, show how they bump apart and how they flow together, how you can think of it as a big old box and then given time and experience with more nuance, all of a sudden you'll be placing things more accurately. And even when they're not perfectly accurate, they're still gonna ring pretty true or you'll very quickly be able to see the relationship and make the correction you need. And then once we do that, we can start getting more nuance. Back of the skull, corner side. And maybe more than one corner, maybe several corners. And then you can start getting more and more nuance, whether it's seeing a three-quarter front with the side in the back and a suggestion in the front, or well, we can leave that, or a three-quarter front where we can see the side in the front and the suggestion in the back. We want to know what's around the other side, around the other side of the corner, on the other side of the door, on the other side of the head. You're only getting to see half of it. You're only getting to show your audience half of it. What can we do to suggest that even though you can only see this half, there is another half. Even though you can only see this half, There is another half and we can lead them through those little transitions through. And the more we can learn to tie things together in more than one way, both the zigzag and the beautiful looping curve of the temple, the better more structured. Can I get you to zigzag back here and come down into the barrel of the mouth, into the maxilla and the mandible. We can see the connective tissue several ways. Really good things happen. Okay, hope that helps. Let's stop there. And you can see the, the power of most of what I did today was drawing over these drawings and paintings, you can see the power of doing that. You can start to see how things work together. This is a little bit like a marionette kind of a puppet jaw where we come down the cheekbones, off the cheekbones and down to the mouth, down to the mouth with the teeth and onto the chin, onto the chin, under the teeth and back to the jaw, back to the jaw and over the ear. It's reminiscent of over the temple line and so on.
so the more connective pathways we can see how to fit things together, uh, the better, better uh, our drawings will be. Okay, and let's see. Uh, at Steve Houston Draws from Life, this is uh, uh, Terrace Major. There's a mu muscle guy here. Uh, at your website, your uh, sketchbook says coming soon. Um, I don't, uh, I think we were, Mike's doing a ton of work reconstructing some things on the website and some of our uh, pages to give you guys information and stuff. Uh, so that might be part of that. I don't have a sketchbook coming soon. We've got prints that are, uh, that uh, are, we have one print out. We're, we're in the works of do, doing several prints uh, out. That's coming soon, but I'm not sure what that is, Terrace. So it's, I'm sorry. Um, uh, someday I would like to do, I have plans to do some monograph books uh, uh, to put out for you, but it'll be a little while. Um, so let's see. Uh, Danny says, I find that at the at this angle, that nose is so hard to place correctly. It really is. Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure if you're talking about three-quarter front or this one on the left, but it really is. But if you construct it in relationship to the, to the front plane, Here's the central axis, so the symmetry of the eye socket and everything else builds off that. <clears throat> and then this front plane right here, I want some of that nose to be in there. And the side plane will set up with it or not, depending, align with it or not. But if you can get this front of the nose in line, even though it bumps out, I'll give him a busted nose here because he had it. Uh, even if it bumps out, it's going to stay in connection. Notice the hairline is doing that too. Notice the bump of the shadow is doing that too. The barrel of the mouth and the chin, although it gets lost in the gl glove, doing that too. And I cheated there a little bit, didn't I? This is not perfectly angled to that. It's doing that. I'm exaggerating it slightly. But this is actually going off. So these are all parallel. And you can vanish them to a vanishing point. I just make them parallel because they're going to be rounded and softened and organic. I just make them parallel. So ideally, that front nose would be parallel to it. This, notice we just have a ball of a nose here, but the shadow of the nostril, even though it's not on the front plane, strictly speaking, is still going in a similar way. Doesn't have to be perfect. Similar way to the eyebrow line, to the front of the lip. There's a little septum area right there. Lower lip. So shadow. They're all very close to parallel. That's what we want. And if it gets off a little bit, that's okay. And I would sometimes do that on purpose. I don't know if I did it here on purpose or not. Get that off a little bit. And I'm again overdoing it because they're broken noses. So I'd sometimes twist the nose a little bit. But as long as it's close, that's close enough. 